What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P, Marky D here with a premiere of our TDU. Um, one of us will join you in the live chat tomorrow, but we've got a couple of competing conflicts, so we want to make sure you got your TDU. Marky D, how are you doing on this fine day? I'm pretty good. And I'm only really... I'm two drives or three drives away from being better than Matt Canada. <laughs> Mate, no... <laughs> Like, look, let, let's just, we're going to get straight into it. We're going to do oh, our own we, we, we have to. Like, there's another show. If you missed the show I put out um, yesterday, by the time you watch this live to air around that Canada, I don't want to have to repeat the same things, but you go back and listen to it. I talked about his failure to use tight ends and H backs, which was meant to be the Matt Canada offense. He's got yes. every type of tight end. He's got a receiving tight end, a blocking tight end that can, is bigger than everyone else in the league. And he's got the small little H backing or, or a smaller receiver and H back in Connor Hayward. He can't use any of them. So then you automatically think, well, then he must be able to use the run. The Steelers have 96 yards on the ground right now in two, two games. He's only, if, if there's 24 yards that have been caught by Freemuth and Haywood and Washington, Boy. 24 yards in two games. And then you see the stat that's done around social media this week after the Browns game that the Steelers didn't have, did not score any points within 30 yards of the Browns in like the, you know, defensive end zone. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know. Like, obviously I don't have to, it's Matt Canada needs to fix it. But I heard someone this week, one of the commentators said, I think it was Chris Carter. We've seen 36 games plus of Matt Canada and it's not working. It's, it's just not working. And it's not Pickett. Like, Pickett's a rookie quarterback, like a second-year quarterback that's going to miss some throws. Technically, he's not even played 16 games, 17 games yet. This isn't on Pickett. I, I, I am just – we've talked about it through Ben Roethlisberger's last two years, and I'll throw it to you in a set, Mark. I feel like we're wasting the defense. And I'm sick of freaking saying that every year, man. We've been doing shows for over three years. <laughs> we forgot to celebrate that little one because it occurred during my wedding week. We're doing shows for three years – and we've been saying the same thing every couple of weeks. Oh, are we wasting the defense? Are we wasting the defense? At this point, we're wasting the defense. Well, I don't know what to say, but I will say something because I have to because I'm on a podcast. It, it used to be it was Ben's fault because he was older. He was a veteran. That what it was. Oh, it's, it's Matt Cutter. It's Ben's fault. Then it was. It was Trubisky because Trubisky was in the, the, the that system. He was a veteran. Trubisky sucks and whatever. Maybe it wasn't Trubisky. Now it's all oh, we'll give Kenny time and Kenny's a rookie. And is it Kenny? So how can it be? Is the common denominator when you go back to everything, the more the more data we get, it goes back to Matt Canada. Now I do say that I do say that the offense, the offensive line, the run game, everything, players should be accountable, but the common denominator is MC. And I'm actually I'm sick of saying his name. It's him. It is. It was 22 points in 2021. It's now 18. Now it's average of four of, of seven. And if you can't beat, by the way, I looked up uh, the Raiders, uh, uh, the Buffalo Bills ran 180 yards on the Raiders last week. If we don't get minimum 100 yards, and I'm talking with the players or scheme or plays or whatever happened, it's a failure. And this may be a time where they go and they have to hop fire the guy by the bye, by the bye, because I think you have to. Like It's, it's not bye working. Bye, it's bye-bye at the bye. <laughs> it's, it's not working. And... The seventy-one yard TD was great. I did a, did a breakdown on Jalen Warren TD where he's out. He it, the one play I saw was great was a Jalen Warren thirty-yard run. Everybody ran to the right hand side. It was a, a natural pick, and Jalen Warren got past fast past thirty yards. Great, great to see. But we but then following that was a minus two yard was two completions to Austin. Yes, Kenny Pickett was accurate was bad, but it also goes into the coaching, the scheme, and the offensive lines been playing really poor. But the common denominator is MC, and it's 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 bad. And the NFL sees it. We're ranked 32nd everything. And the defense had to score 14 points last week. And Chris Boswell scored six. You don't score those points, we lose the game. Pretty no, bad. I, I actually don't know. But you make a good point about the tight ends. Why aren't you scheming up plays to Fryermuth, Haywood, and Darnell Washington? They should be involved in your uh, repertoire of plays. And get them involved. Especially when Deontay Johnson is out injured. Like, and and... The thing that I, I want to unpack what you said there as well. You talked about the Canada playbook and the good plays. The Steelers defense talk about the fact that the defense hasn't actually changed a hell of a lot 
since the 70s and 80s. Like if you're a veteran, you could come in tomorrow, apart from not having the athletic athleticism anymore, you would understand the Steelers' defense. The Steelers don't completely change everything about their offense every time there's an OC. They change a lot of it, but not everything. And like, especially not when you have Big Ben. I can't imagine, especially with Pickett and the way the offenses are run today, the offense, like a good quarterback needs to react to what's going on, talk about the play in stools, how they're going to change it. I, the thing that I, it's it's funny. A lot of people said last year the only reason Canada stayed was because Kenny felt comfortable with him. I do think Kennedy Ken, Kenny would have advocated somewhat because actually it was Canada that helped Kenny go to pit. I, I love Kenny's loyalty and I love Kenny as a character, but this is loyalty that is misplaced. And I think it's actually going to cost Kenny if Matt Canada stays the OC for the season. It will cost Kenny in his career. What the most frustrating part is too, and you, you saw that you saw the interview as well. I just think there's there's zero accountability. And like I would like I would respect Canada more if he came out and said, you know what, it's all my problem. It's me. I, I I'm stuck. I'm the up. problem. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> My, you know, my guys are good. They're cool. You know, we I got to do better in scheming. But he doesn't have that accountability. And he also came out and said, which is the, the, one of the best lines, he said, we did enough, good enough to win. No, you didn't. The offense didn't do good enough to win. You did I can't enough. really said that. I, 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 look, in my career, at, like my proper day job, I am a media advisor to a company. You never, ever say something like that when it's not true. Like, it's blatantly not true. What's not? He can't score seven points. He didn't. didn't. Yeah. Highsmith and Watt had six points each. (laughs) Yes. Right? It's remember the Boswell <laughs> thing from last year with Chubitsky? Yeah, no, where, it has you to know, true. like it has you, to be. You know, it's not you didn't win the game, mate. Like yeah. that's not you. We didn't win because of you. He, he said he, he people thought he was saying that to Canada. Now it has to be true. It's for sure. We didn't win because of you. Like it's like everyone knows, but everyone it looks like everyone knows but the Rooneys and Tomlin and maybe and maybe some of the other guys in there. I think Tomlin it, knows. I think Tomlin <sighs> knows. He tried to defend him after the press conference uh, after the game. But the way he said what he said on the Tuesday or was Wednesday press conference this week, I think he, my- yeah. The string must be short though, and I think if he does, if he does be successful, sweet, it's good for everyone. But I feel like the string is now shorter. Where it, there's, a, I think there could be a point where they break. But the what's a pass? I, I guess like like true. You know, our listeners are thinking about it like what's coming up with the Raiders and then Texans and then Ravens. What? What's a pass mark for this offense? Like, like what, what, what's, a, what's the point where we go, maybe there's a bit of promise here? Because to me, and as I kind of alluded to on the podcast that I did, the, like the people should go back and listen to on the tight end one, like, and running game and stuff like that, and some real home truths, because the counter offense is going backwards and regressing, like what you talked about from a points perspective as well. Like, what's a pass mark? Because we have more, ga- like, if Canada only, even if Canada sees out his contract, we have seen more of Canada already than what we are going to see. And it's getting worse. So how okay. can it actually get good enough that this team is a contender? That, that's my point. I, I don't think it, it can. I don't think it can. Here's a question too, right? Do you think they extend the contract after this year? No. Well, then why are we keeping him now? That's, and that's basically what I'm saying. <laughs> because he's proved up until now. Like if he played if the, 16, 17, 17, right? So that's 50 games. We've already seen 36 games of Canada, right? It's not going to, there's there's not, there's almost nothing he can do apart from scoring 35 points week in, week out, just the offense that would make me confident that he's the guy next year. What did you say? 24 yards for the tight ends? Yeah. I'm looking at it now. It is terrible. Like we were promised that we were promised these three tight ends. I think it's, I think it's if, Hayward so far, 19 yards, and yes. Catherine it's four yards. Yes, or six yards or something. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We were promised so many things, and yes, we're versing harder defenses. But I don't care. You still got to go out there and. Freeman is a it. top five tight end in this league. And Every podcast nothing. that Ben Roethlisberger mm. does. On the on the big seven channel, whatever it is, he talks about Pat Freemuth being a guy and being a guy in any era. Pat Freemuth has gone like last year; he had almost eight hundred yards. This year, like four through two games, and that's not on Kenny because he had seven hundred ninety seven last year. Well, where where do you think like the where's like the you know the I don't know like the play action passes where you get the tight end in, in space or you know you have you know you see those kind of cool plays where you see the misdirection with this all guys running to the right hand side and the screen on the left and 
Where do you, we don't we never see we, we that? We saw two we? in the last game. But do you know that thing too? I'm over the fucking part of my language. I'm over. The, <laughs> I'm over the sweeps. Right, the sweeps. Yeah. I like putting yeah. Zach Banner on the field. It was like, <laughs> yeah, they're obviously going to run the ball. Like this, this, every time they do a sweep, that like one time out of ten they pass it. It's not even a sweep play action. It's just a we're going to shift a bunch of people, and and at the moment it re- results in a false start every now and again as well. At five, every, yeah, there was, there was quite five a few times. false starts, wasn't there? Right. Uh, so just week. keep it simple. Yeah. Run it up the guts. Why is Najee dancing around out the yeah. back there? Like I, I just see him. Like, Siamalo and Daniels should they, they should be elevating this offensive line. Daniels and Cole have looked crap to start the season. I've said that both weeks. And Siamalo on the run plays, like you can almost no tell that Siamalo is like, what the heck am I doing? Yes, it's kind of like you know what I mean. It's not that he's not performing. It's like yes. I've seen him on his play. There was one play that it caught me on this week against the Browns, where they've shifted. Well, he's on the left. Yes, they've shifted to the right. And you see him look back as as Kenny's handing the ball off, and he's got this look on his face like, "I'm not sure that's going to work," <laughs> kind of thing. Yes. And and I saw it in a split second. I wish I could go back and I wish I'd screenshot it or something. Although they they make it very hard the NFL now to do that. But I'm going. I don't think he believes in the offense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well. It's kind of it's kind of like these guys are getting paid the coin, and I know they want to win, but obviously they you have the person calling the plays, designing the plays, and all that kind of stuff for the players you have, right? Remember last year they couldn't use Calvin Austin even before he was injured, had no, had no room or didn't figure that out, and now it's like, okay, well they're running Najee side to side, they hand the football football off like in a kind of a sweep or halfback toss or whatever it may be, it just doesn't work. Like run Najee straight and go straight and like pull a guard or something or use a fullback or something. But we well, do a fun that. play. Do a fun play where you line up Najee and Warren there. Warren is like a pass blocker, so they think it's play action, right? Mm-hmm. And instead, Najee hits in and blocks because he's 242 pounds. And Jalen Warren hits like a ball. What? Like, if I can sit here all the way in freaking Australia and come up with that creativity. And there's only little little things we could change. They're little things, and they're not major changes. They're just like doing things smart. Like, as it, as our listeners can probably tell, and you and and obviously you'll be commenting in the live chat by the time you see this, it's it's over for me with Canada. It's no oh layers, it? Canada, get back on the mountain, <laughs> goodbye, like bye bye. But there's no there's no layers where he's building upon stuff. Because I was listening to a podcast, I think I might have been on that's still, ex- but yeah, that's a good point. And it's like he he does the, the the big play to George Pickens or whatever. It's great, cool, fantastic. But nothing builds upon one another. But that's and not also- Canada. That's that's Pickens hitting a slant. And if yeah. you saw, he did a deft foot, like double juke kind of thing. It wasn't a full, like full body double juke, but he shifted his feet really quickly. And then he broke free and he hit the angle and hit the pace. And even he didn't think he was going to get there because you saw him in the last 30 yards do an extra step stride. And he realized he was away. And once he realized he's away, he put the football out 20 yards out. That's got nothing to do with Matt Canada. That's another Chris Boswell that's not you, mate. <laughs> Plus, it was a bit of blown coverage too. I think from that round. As oh, well. but but totally, there was no one in there. There was there was no, no one, and there was no yeah. It's not like there wasn't because the, um, design. the linebacker that should have been on the other side. Oh, and that was the Warren one. The linebacker went too far. He shouldn't have done that. And Warren ran around. But yeah. But but it, what we're seeing now is like some go routes to the outside fades, and then we're seeing like the slants. They they try to slant, you know. And people will say, well, Kenny's got to read the field, but but also Canada's saying, well, no, he's the he's the hot route, he's the route you should be going. They're not letting him make the choices. And and Ben talked about this too uh when he was watching the game from this week, where he said, There are plays that I sit there and I'm like, why don't they do more wide receiver screens? Because they're getting those guys open because the boxes are being loaded up. Now, I agree, particularly, I mean, it would help a lot if DJ was back. That would help them with these screens. Yes. And a lot of Steelers fans hated the screens with Haley because it became too predictable and it didn't always work. But if you're going to yeah. do all that bloody, you know, motion and sweeps and all that, that's going to be distracting enough for the defense that if you manage to get the ball off without clonking someone in their head as they're running past and sweeping and they actually get the ball, there's going to be so much commotion going on. Maybe the sweep, maybe the wide receiver screens will work. Yeah. Especially I with agree. a guy like Jalen Warren, right? Like, well, they have to get like the they sh- who can get combat catches and a guy sh- like Freemuth. Like, I. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they should be getting the ball to Warren. And I understand the players got to play, but ball, ball to Warren, ball to Connor Hayward because they're football players, guys in space who run, who run, who want to run. I love Same with Primer. So. What's that? 
I love the one you talked about the football players last week. Well, they are. They just run. They, they run are. With You're right. They play. You like they want to run people fucking over. I've got to swear too, by the way. Hello, how's it going? Like they run them <laughs> over. Like they're football players. Everyone else on the team, like Pickens, he's cool. You know what I mean? But like Connor Haywood and Joel Warren, they run but every time. Can you explain to me this? This is the thing that frustrated me when I did my show today. It actually got angrier as I did the show. <laughs> well, as I recorded it today that went out because you You're guys just actually mad. Just yeah, as I was talking about. Oh, wow. That's when bad. I did the research last night, and it, I, I looked at it and I went, I've got to go to bed. I was going to record it before I went to bed. I thought, I'm going to go to bed, sleep on it for five or six hours, wake up to the show. And then I saw his press conference, which already pissed me off. Matt Canada managed to get Claypool over five or 600 yards a season in the last two years. And you're wasting talent like Freemuth, Pickens. Like, I, I can't. I can't understand it. And people say, well, then that's Kenny Pickett. It's not Kenny Pickett because Canada has got more control of the offense this year. He's never had more con- control than now. He didn't have control with Big Ben because, as I said on the show, Big Ben, and as everyone knows, changed the plays halfway through the game and definitely in the final quarter would do pl- draw up plays in the dirt. And Kenny last year, he couldn't do everything he wanted to do because they wanted to let Kenny ease in. And they did have the run game first. And people, a lot of teams sat back and were a little bit like, What's Kenny going to do? And we won some tight games down the stretch because Kenny's a baller. Then this year, he gets more of like control of the offense and he gets more players that supposedly fit the Matt Counter offense. We've had two drafts now to draft them and it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Like, as you said, common denominator. It has to be. We've all got eyes. I, like, I don't know. Like, we all seem it's to be not- saying the same thing. 60,000 people in, at Accrashaw are changing yeah. the same thing. Like, there's only well, one person in the room that thinks they could do this job, and it's Matt Canada. The and it, then maybe he doesn't. Well, I was thinking the same thing because you it said also, it to me. I, I I should give credit there. You said that to me on our well, um, I, box. I, I feel like that he's just not confident in what he's saying and what he's doing, and he's just doing it because when he talks to it, he's always head's always down. He's like, you know what, we we need to get better and uh, the uh, and. Uh, and uh, Pickett's here, and uh, it's me. It's it's the offense. It's uh, that's what it sounds like, right? Uh, right, right, right. You don't even really hear any year, when Calvin Austin in preseason. I don't know how to use him. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Look at what he did on the weekend <laughs> or the other night, like Monday night. Like I mean, I just I don't. You know what's funny too is a lot of uh, media guys are now saying, well, "Why don't you just look at other other offenses and just copy that." You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, I just think it's going to sound ridiculous and it's going to sound very millennial. Matt Canada should do do his plays in Madden and see if they work (laughs) because they wouldn't work there and they're not working out in the field. I still have some hope it can change because we do have, like, you got you said, all the skillful players, all the guys, Pickens, you name it, Robinson, the veteran, look, he's been playing okay. But they're not big, like even a pass. One of the first passes we saw to Robinson. Sure, the pass over here, but the route was going like five yards. Someone else said too on the radio the other day. They were saying that Matt Canada, he schemes to get five yards, not the first down. Yes, and that's yes, the problem. Too. Yes, yes, and this is what we had that problem last the last year of Ben Roethlisberger to a degree. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. We're kind of, where, short. Where it was just the first like it was always short, and it was always like at the three yard run, a two yard run. Like mm. it's it's almost like he doesn't understand that the best thing you can do on the field is get to the end zone the fastest. Yeah, he's trying he's trying to be chip away, be conservative because there was a ball to Robinson. It was a bit too high. He fell over, got five yards. But then we did. Um, I think it was a. Uh, then it was two slants in a row. The, the exact same play. Um, of course, the ball could have been out more in front as well. But the route was like a, a, it's a real quick. But there's route not bang. enough drag routes. There's not enough like. No one gets separation. No, there's no pit. You know, like the, the New England guys. And the back shotgun in the day. is so predictable. Like, did you, did you know? Did you know? I uh, it was one of the guys from uh, Matt Crowley or someone said uh, he broke it all down that they 80% of the time they're in the shotgun, they pass it. They, they're yeah. the high, it's high, not, 80%. Yeah. That's bad. I know. I mean, like, it, again, are you playing Madden out there? Like, yeah, that, so I mean, and, even the three and one with Kenny, like I still awful. can't get over yeah, the three what, and we, one with Kenny. What do, you, what do you reckon about that? That's terrible, right? That's that that is the most comical. If I was Kenny, terrible. I would have walked to the next stoppage in play. I would have walked to Tomlin and been like, "What do you want me to do here?" 
Did you, did you see what happened that play too? Robins, uh, Robinson came in motion, came over. And then there was like a Joe and Warren was lead blocking with someone else, maybe Fry move. And there was it like should have been defenders. an RPO. It should have been an RPO. But it, play. Was, it, was, it was a designed run for him to I know. Run. I don't know. It wasn't <laughs> even a sneak. It was just Kenny's going to take on one of the best defenses in the league. And he if also he does caught- that against the Ravens, Kenny won't be playing again this season because they will smash oh, him into the dirt. Ro- and think- Roquan Smith will injure Kenny if Kenny yeah. does that against the Ravens. Really, and I'm not being you- not being hy- hyperbolic. I'm no, not trying true. to be dramatic or melodramatic. It, it is the truth. It is the truth. Look at what happened to Chubb, right? As yep. Minka said on the press conference, this is a physical game. Mm-hmm. And they're out there getting him, like, killed on every freaking play. Yeah, and you, they put him in the line where you also have the ball in the shotgun, which you're already five yards behind. Why would you do that? Why would you go back five yards to run six to get one? <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Like that was the comical play with that with that um, you know. And I think I'm How going down the field goal. I heard your man Presley Harvin, and I, he's to be fair, he's definitely he won the so ball well. against Brady Man. Oh yeah, four really punts well. in the ten. Yeah, and really none well. of those times did that work out for them. Now a lot of that's to do with the defense, but like mm-hmm. when you got the ball back. How do you not? How are you not scoring off those shorter fields? Like I, I, I just, I can't understand well, it. Like, I think thank God. Can you imagine if High Smith had intercepted the ball and not run in for a TD, and what had scooped up the ball and not run it in for a TD? Uh, Would points. they have won that game? Would they have converted one of those two chances? No. They would have got beat. They would have got beat twenty-one to, to like fourteen or something. Well, it doesn't help too. So the first play was the interception, three plays by Kenny. It was a bad route. He's his mistake. The next one was a three play, seven yards punt. Then it was a fumble. Uh, that was by Shesky. By the way, too, that was a most hospital pass. And they're all blaming Shesky. That guy, Kenny put him up. Yeah. Kenny, no. Kenny put him on fire, didn't he? Dude, that but was I think like, Matt hey, Canada hey, did. But to true? me, that's Matt yeah, Canada. True. It's when they go this way, then you flick it out that way. Like Yeah. And then the, the, there's there was a quarterback running down to kill you. Like he got lit he up. Was and it there was no one there to block. Like, no, it wasn't. It wasn't all Shesky's fault in that scenario. I felt bad because he got concussed and whatnot. But that but was like. But to also to be fair to Shesky, I haven't seen the other angle. But to me, when I saw the replay, I don't think he was watching the ball properly. Mm. Like he he didn't seem like he was remotely prepared to catch it. He got, he got done. So he got done. Done. <laughs> but that was the fumble too. And then the next one was six plays, thirty five yards. Um, that went. That for a punt as well, I think. Yeah. Parvin. Oh, that was when we had the that was the the, the good play was when Jalen Warren ran the 30 yards and they went minus two. Then they, they threw the ball incomplete two times in a row. This offense sucks. And overall, the guys need to get better. But Canada has all these skillful guys. There's no more excuses now for Canada. And getting to the point is I reckon they will I reckon they'll fire him, eh? I, I, I do too. I, I can't, like, I can't. I can't I can't look. The thing is, there's nothing on the ledger to defend him. There's not, not a playoff over. win. There's not, oh, with Ben, we scored 25 points a game. They, 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 there's nothing there. <laughs> and and look at all the first, but look at all the first round talent they've invested in the drafts. Like, are they going to literally sit there and say the Steelers scout, scouts are shit? Or are they going to say Matt counted as shit? Look, mm. Najee Har- the first two rounds of the draft, Najee, like, like you can go back to Claypool. Obviously, he's an idiot, right? But he's gone. But at least he was, you know, like, he was a top two pick, and he, he they did he did something. But you go Najee, Pat Freemuth. Um, you look at they've obviously got they've got Broderick Jones in there, George Pickens in there. Um, who else we got? Connor Hayward's another offensive draft pick, even though he's in the seventh round. Dino Washington was a fourth round pick, but that was only because he slipped. They probably would have used a third on him. Um, apart from the fact they needed depth at outside linebacker. Um, they've, they've made plenty of investments. Oh, and then Kenny Pickett, of course, right? You've had an, four or five core guys, and yes, they're young, but they're top talent. They were all very good at in college oh, football, right? I'm seeing other teams get guys out of the sixth and the seventh round from no-name colleges that are playing well in the NFL. I mean, look at Sam, how good Sam Howell's going, third Third, fourth, or fifth round pick. I think, he was I good think North Carolina. Kenny was better than Hal yeah. was at, at North Carolina. And look how good Hal's going. Like, this is ca- – like, it, it can't not be Canada. I reckon the Commanders beat the Bill this week. Just saying. So do I. I've been on the Commanders all offseason. 
Yeah, I reckon they're playing real well. I reckon they're right three dollar three dollar outsiders. Um, yeah, I, the, I think when I see if they're going to fly Canada, it's this is more probably the the hottest it's ever been in the hot seat. And I don't know who you're replacing with or whatever you may do, or you just have to get Glenn Thomas to step in on. Someone step in with some fresh new idea. At least to be the a court Sully's the quarterback coach, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. But at least someone to at least call plays that maybe have a better, you know, maybe he can be a fresh face and Ben likes Sully. Ben likes Sully. He must mm. be all right. But do you think if they were if they were to to get rid of Canada, do you think that Glenn Thomas, if he steps up, would he just be a, a new fr- face with the same sim- similar offense? They're not going to be yep. able to change everything because they're going to have done no. certain installs. But they might listen to Kenny a bit more. They might open it up a bit more. They might see the thing that I can't, I've never been able to figure out by the Matt Canada offense, and we should flick the last five minutes to to focus on the game. But like it is in context of what's going to happen against the Raiders. The thing mm-hmm. that I've never been able to figure out is is like the Matt Cannard offense just crap or is it an offense where you it's too complex like there's a lot going on but nothing actually happens I don't know if it's too complex I don't know but do you see why I would say that though with like it being too complex in that like no one can ever figure out where they're meant to be no one kind of a lot of players run the same be in the same area too. You notice that? Where that's, my, like... that's my point. Like it, it, you're never <laughs> confident. And you talk about cohesion and synergy. It's never mm-hmm. like that exists there. Maybe, maybe it's a good shot, but run by a bad manager. Maybe that's it. Maybe the offense is, not, is a good shot, but it's run by a bad manager. And maybe if Glenn Thomas gets in there, he can run it better than run it better than um, there's no one else because you've got to get the ball to Pickens. You've got to get the ball to DJ Robins, uh, Robinson. Murph's got to be involved. You I think you what it feels like? It feels like you've got the best food, mm-hmm. but you don't know how to price the menu. You don't know how to like package up the meal deals. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, it feels off, doesn't it? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm hopeful, dude. I think they can win this game actually versus the Raiders, but God, I think the, the interview pissed me off. And like, I was, I was, I did a video a couple of days ago. I'm like, oh, he'll be fine. He's going to be the, the guy for the whole year. But the interview really annoyed me because he said it was uh, we we just did enough on offense. No, you didn't. The offense was bad. Fourteen three and out, dude. Mate, Fourteen so three and outs. Average time in possession is like twenty one minutes again. It's the same as last year's start. But it's like, why didn't you build off last year? Last year, the last nine games was fantastic. They ran the ball one hundred and forty six yards a game. They were scoring points. They were doing things. They were moving the football. It's like they started mm. all over again. It's like you've had all off season, all off season to prepare. It was with better talent, with much better talent. Yeah. And guys getting stronger, fitter. And you can't blame everything on Dan Moore, blame everything on the offensive line. They, yes, they got to get better for sure. But the, the, the whole thing itself, when you're going out there and it's like second and 15 after a stupid penalty, you, you just can't get, get, get out of that. Or you can't, if you go first and 10, you run into a brick wall and it's second and eight. What are you meant to do? Then you do a screen. So, <laughs> so I guess moving to the Raiders game in a nutshell, like what are, what are like, what are like three quick things that you want to see that you think will help them win the game? Like, all right, because I'm, I'm I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. Apart from the defense, I'm in, I'm just oh. talking offense. Three things from the offense. Yeah, oh, I was gonna say TJ. What T, uh, TD? And, yeah, that's and, what it is. They're the offense right now. <laughs> um, you know what? To be very honest, run the ball and be committed to run the ball. And when I say don't just run the ball to run it, like have some plays. And you're a coach, Kurt Canada. I'm not a coach. Show me that you're a good coach. It's not. You're not showing me you're a good coach. Like, run the ball effectively. If that's using Connor Haywood, if that's using play action pass, I don't know. Run the ball and move the guys forward. They don't go forward. They get beaten on the line every single time. And Kenny's got to be a bit out of his – I think he's in his own way at the moment. He's playing pretty average football. He is. Uh, he's, I mean, and people call me a Kenny apologist. It's not that I'm a Kenny apologist. No. It's that well, it's very hard to be cr- deeply, deeply I'm not giving up on it, dude. Kenny I saw this in week. the current setup. This week, I saw everyone saying he's a bastard, he's terrible, he's this. I'd give him three years. Give him three years at least, and he, he can get out of this. I think he can in this game too. But I'd say run the football, use fry move. And I'm talking like little routes or little, I don't know, little, little, uh, I don't know what you call it, in routes or out routes. Just get fry move the ball, 10 yard, 10 yard bloody pickup. He's bigger than the other guys on the other side of the field. He's bigger what about Darnell? How does how does he have a two hundred and ninety pound guy who's six foot eight and he never gets one, the ball? He hasn't got one uh, one target. I don't think, not one target yet. Um, 
They're not running I mean, him at all. I can't. I can't. There's no excuse. Yeah, it's like it's like the exact same offense. We talked about this too. The offense we yeah, guy, if, if Darnell we're... has a five foot ten guy on him, unless the guy is Nate Robinson and then should be playing in the NBA, he ain't getting the ball if you throw it to the top of the hands of Darnell. He's not getting the ball. Physics say he can't jump that high. I don't think he has no no targets for him at all. No targets at all. Uh Georgia 17, Joe Warner is 12, Robinson 11, John Day 6, Cavados and 10, Connor Haywood 4. McFarlane, two, five, Frymouth, one, Boykin, and five, Naji. That's it. There's none of Darnell. So as we wrap up the show, I mean, <laughs> they win this game against the Raiders. Ra- I think, Ra- Ra- yeah, Raiders. I if they can sort some things out, run the football, and actually have a good offense that isn't high school or isn't, like, predictable, and, you know, maybe they win in spite of Kenny. Uh, sorry, in Canada. Because I think Kenny will get – his accuracy will come back. He'll come – he'll get he'll, – he'll, He'll get he'll get a down with Pickens too, and we are missing one of our best receivers. But he'll get a down with some of these guys to, I think I think have be able to win games. But if this offense continues to struggle, we can't. It's going to be very tough. They have to, they legit have to win games like sixteen seven, or sixteen ten, like legit. Like you'll need field goals to win the game. That's why they've got to fire him too before the buy because the buy means that they could install in a bit of a new offense. Like Glenn Thomas has got time. I just think we need like a, we need a fresh. I think I think it would do everyone good. Get rid of him, fire him, fresh start with Thomas. The other thing too is Thomas. if you fire him, then if people think it's Kenny, Kenny has to take we'll some know. responsibility, and so does we'll the know. rest of the offense, right? We don't, we don't know right now. It's like oh, but that's but what I'm know. saying is if you fire him, the in, the the positive impact you may have is more than just getting rid of Canada because everyone else has to take greater ownership of that. Sometimes you have to do this, even if it's not completely his fault. I think to, to reset something, you got to go, yeah. get rid of someone. I mean, and the, uh, the definition of idiocy or lunacy, whichever word you want to use, is doing the same thing twice and expecting a different result. And they've had you two years what? of Canada, and and that's where we're at. If we go for the next, and I'm hopeful with this game, right? The next two games, though, and it's the exact same. We're scoring seven, ten points. Set like they score one touchdown. They score twenty eight points over four games. I'm probably gonna lose my mind. Because his offense is fant- it can be fantastic if they if they. If it's they also this. like you and I will because we're crazy enough. It's pretty hard as an international fa- fan to wake up at three AM and watch that shit. It is. That's why it was hard to watch when I was watching Trubisky. But maybe it wasn't Trubisky as much as it was the offense. Because I mean, Kenny's they- definitely an improvement. If if, if if Kenny, if Mitch Trubisky, if Kenny hadn't been ready last year for whatever reason. I think they would have sacked Canada at the end of the season. Yeah. But we are the worst, by the way. The bu- the Bungles are pretty bad too on their um Yeah, but Joey Burrows, own. Joey Burrows injured. Like he's and then he did get injured out of the game. He's he's in a bad spot. But so. yards per game, do you know how many yards per game we're getting, by the way? Uh so they've had two twenty two average pass, uh less than two uh, two, I would say 260, 259. 247 and the Bengals at 212. Oh, there you They're go. Minus sack yardage. Yeah, minus sack yardage. Yeah. 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 And last year was 322, but still 247 is pretty bad. It's regressing. It can't regress. It's mm-hmm. got to go up. Uh, and total off, total offense, like first downs per game, I think we're. Oh, boy. Oh, my good. Guess how many? Guess how many? First downs per game. <laughs> it's so bad. Nine. <laughs> 12. It's so bad. Everything is bad about the about the rankings. Twelve and the leading guys are twenty seven with the Rams. Who thought the Rams? And were I would argue. And I would argue. Just to wrap, like when we do the show, like I would argue that the first downs, six of those in the season, like came again in that drive that we got the touchdown against the 49ers. Yeah, well, it was going two minute two minute drill. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Actually, it's a, it's I think there was average. five or six first downs. Yeah. I, that builds the average up. So that's the, and they all also would have been playing more, not like oh, a bit of, bit of, kind of bit of a prevent style defense yeah, too. 100%. You know what I mean? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm all hopeful. right. Well, to close out the show, what's your score prediction? Uh, I think I had like 27 17. I would want to, I want to see him bounce back and score TDs. I want to, I want to cheer Canada on, but 27 17 is my score. I think I'm going to say the Steelers win by. Three points. I don't. I've got no idea what the score is. <laughs> Three to zero. <laughs> yeah. But but with that, that's going to wrap up this week's episode of Steelers Touchdown Under. 
Marky D, pump all us right. all up. Let's go. Go, Steelers. Here we go. Steelers 9-0. 